Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus, this morning. Somebody say thank you, Lord. I tell you, it's summertime. And the place is heating up. But the greatest heat you could get is the love of Jesus this morning. And this morning we are here to introduce you to that love. We want to thank all of you for joining us this morning. We are streaming straight from the Open Bible Church in Lavantil. That's 103 Eastern Main Road in Lavantil. And we are so happy to be back into your homes, into your institutions, into your vehicles. Wherever you are this morning joining us, we are so happy to be with you and for you to be with us. And so this morning, before we go further into the service, I just want to ask you to invite your friends, invite your family, invite your relatives. Let them be a part of what God is doing here. I want you to be a part of what's happening. I want you to join in the worship. You can clap, you can sing, you can dance, hallelujah. Whatever you want to do. If you don't know the songs, you hum them. If you know them, sing them. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity of coming into the homes of those who are viewing. Thank you for the opportunity for coming into the institutions, into the vehicle, wherever the people are today. We thank you for those who are joining us. And I pray in the name of Jesus uh, that you'll open the eyes of the understanding. I pray that your word will have a free course. I pray that your word will fall on good ground. I pray, oh God, Father, however that word is delivered today, whether in music, whether in song, whether the preach word, however it is delivered, oh God, I'm praying for a free course. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm praying for souls to be born into your kingdom. I'm praying for souls to be transformed. And I pray, Lord Jesus, there's someone listening to my voice this morning. And oh God, I pray that you will deliver that young man from that pain. Hallelujah. Oh God, you touch him this morning. Bring deliverance. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for those who are ailing, those who are sick, that you will touch their hearts today, God. You will heal them, deliver them. Make a way where there seems to be no way as they trust in you because your word declares you will never put to shame he that put his trust in you. I thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name. I want to invite our worship team at this time that is led by Brother Nislo John to come. And they are going to lead us in worship, in song. Join, join us. Join us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. And Praise the name of Jesus. Welcome Hallelujah. again to Love Until Open Bible Church. We hope you have a wonderful time in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Time to praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, I thank you all the days of my life, of my life, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, I thank you all the days of my life, of my
done for us. Hallelujah. 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 We give you thanks this morning. We give you thanks this morning. My soul is at rest, oh Lord, we give you thanks. Come on, sing it again, we say thanks, thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, oh
just want to love you. I just want, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. Thank you. Well, thank God this morning for the worship. It's so wonderful. To be a part of what God is doing. And I thank you, Brother Nislo, and your team for leading us into the very throne room of God. And at this time, we are not going to introduce you a man of God, a man sent from God by the name of Pastor David Rose. And he is here to deliver God's word to you. Pay close attention to what the Lord is saying to you. And I put, and I want you at this time, let's welcome Pastor David Rose. He's, he's one of our pastors here in Laventil, Open Bible. He's part of our staff here. And so we want to really thank God for him and for the word of God that he's about to deliver in Jesus' name. So let's welcome him this morning. Amen. It's the name of the Lord. A special good morning to each and everyone. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our soon coming King. A special morning to each and every one. And I want to give the pastor, our senior pastor, thanks for the introduction as I come this morning to share the word of God with you. Our God is a good God this morning. And I want to share on a message, you know, and I give the message a title, God's Ark, a place of safety. God's ark, a place of safety. Let's pray this morning, Father. We come to you in the name of Jesus. And we ask that you will minister to our spirits this morning as we look into your word. We pray that your word will so minister to our hearts and that you will transform our lives through your word, O oh God. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We give this time into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. There is safety in God's ark this morning. There is safety in God's ark. And I want to share a scripture here this morning, starting off from in the book of Matthew. And in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and um, chapter 24 deals with a, a chapter here where Jesus was having a discussion with his disciples, where he departed out of the temple, as verse 1 tells us. But he went and he sat upon the mountain of olives. The Mount of Olives. And it says here in verse 3, and he, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the, desi the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? They wanted to know what is the sign of Jesus' return, and what is the sign of the coming of, at the end of the world? And Jesus told them a couple of things going through the, the chapter, but I want to take us down to verse 37. What verse 37 tells us? Jesus answered them, said, said this to them. He said, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, Jesus was telling them how things was in Noah time. It will also be like that in the time just before I return. You know, and this morning, we know for a fact, or we believe for a fact, that Jesus is coming back, that he is coming soon. And Jesus tell his, or told his disciples what to look for before he returned. So the best thing for us this morning is to look what was happening in the times of Noah. 
And we will see that in Genesis chapter 6. In Genesis chapter 6 tells us what was taking place in the times of Noah. As Jesus said here, this, uh, Jesus said to his disciples, the same thing will happen in the times before he returned. And chapter 6 starts off by telling us that it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth and the daughters were born unto them. So multi multiplication was taking place upon the earth. Growth was taking place upon the earth. But in verse 2, it had an unholy union between the sons of God and the daughters of men. You know, but I want to take us down to verse 5. When God did a survey of what was taking place upon the, first, upon the face of the earth. And the Bible tells us here in verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. This is God looking down, doing a survey. This is not a man doing a survey of what taking place upon the earth. This is the great I am that I am. The one that created heaven and earth. He's looking down and this is what he saw. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Man's heart was evil and wicked, evil continually, till it brought God to the point where God, as, as verse 6 tells us, it repented God. God regretted that he made man. And the latter part of verse 6 tells us, it grieved him at his heart. God was grieved at heart when he saw what was taking place upon the earth. And I want us to remember where we start off. Jesus said to his disciples, the same thing that was happening in the days of Noah will be happening in the times just before I return. And it, God was so grieved in his heart. Look at the decision that God took in verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowl of the air, for it repented me that I have made man. God took the decision that he was going to dis destroy man because they were evil. And the sad part about it, it wasn't just man. Because of man's sin, the whole of creation suffered. Because God wasn't just going to destroy man. He was also going to destroy peace and creeping thing, fowls of the air. The whole of creation was suffering because of man. Because of the sin of man. And the Bible tells us, Jesus said it, that in the days of Noah, it's the same thing that is going to be happening in the time before he returned. And brethren, I ask you this morning, as God described it, God did his survey, and he saw the hearts of men. I ask you, as men, as human beings, look upon the earth today and tell me if we're not seeing the same thing that was taking place in Noah's time. The same thing that taking place today is what took place in Noah's time. Men's heart, very evil. If we look at our television, all we have to look at the news, and we see what's going on in our world today, it is, it, it is, it is sad. And if we look at 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Gives us a picture of what Jesus was speaking about when he told his disciple the same things will happen. He tell them there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. They will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Boastful. Proud. Abusive. 
disobedient to their parents? Am I saying things that sound strange to us? Am I saying things that came from Mars? Brethren, these things are happening upon the face of the earth presently. Children disobedient to their parents. We have a lot of ungrateful people around. The Bible says it. We have a lot of unholy people. People who don't want to live righteously. People who don't want to walk in the fear of God. People who are lovers of themselves. Not lovers of good things. It's how people don't like nothing good. All they think is evil. All they see is evil. All they speak is evil. Nothing good. The treacherous. Lovers of pleasure. More than lovers of God. Some people that love the self, they love pleasure so much. Rather than going to the house of God and worship God, they rather go in the bar and take a couple of drinks because they have the rather pleasure. Or they rather go and watch a football game or a cricket game. Nothing wrong with watching sports. But we must never come lovers of pleasures or pleasure more than lovers of God. God comes first. But they became lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And brethren, Pete, um, um, Jesus said to his disciples, these things will happen just before I return. And brethren, that is the time clock to know the return of Jesus. Because Jesus told his disciples, he said, no man don't know the hour. You know. But look out for these things just as it was in the Noah days. It will be in the time, same thing will be in the time before I return. And as we go back to Noah's story, God made that decision that he was going to destroy the earth and he's going to destroy the beasts, the fowls of the air and the creeping things and everything that represented evil upon the earth, God was going to destroy it. The judgment of God was going to come upon the world. And brethren, the times we're living in, the judgment of God is coming, whether we believe it or not. In Noah times, God told the people that Noah was preaching that, that judgment will come. But in all this, as God served the earth, as God looked upon the earth, and God saw that man had was so wicked and so evil, Thank God for his mercies. In verse 8 it says, But Noah found grace in the sight of God. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And brethren, I thank God, even at the evil times we are living in, there is grace for us today upon the earth. There is grace for those who need it or who want it. Today God has provided grace for us so we can escape his judgment when it comes. But the Bible tells us Noah, Noah found grace in the sight of God in verse 8. And verse 9 tells us these are the generation of Noah. It said Noah was a just man. He was a just man. He, 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 he lived up righteousness and he lived for righteousness. He tells us he was perfect in his generation. That means Noah was trying to live a righteous life. And he wasn't just perfect in his generation, but Noah walked with God as he was in love there. It said Noah walked with God. Noah had a relationship with God. Even in that wicked and evil world, and where God made a decision to destroy the world, Noah still walked with God. Noah had a righteous life before the, the sight of God. And you will ask the question, God going to destroy the whole earth? God is going to destroy the world as they know it at that time. You're telling me if Noah found grace in the sight of God, God is going to destroy Noah too? No, brethren, God provided a way. There is safety in the ark of God. In verse 14, Noah, God provided a way for Noah, just as God will provide a way for us in this time that we are living in. The Bible tells us in verse 14, God told Noah, he said, Bill and Ark. He said, brother, Bill and Ark. Judgment coming, Bill and Ark. And when you're done, build the Ark. You understand, you and your family 
as he goes down in verse 18, tell him, but with thee I will establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy son's wife with thee. So God made a way for Noah to escape his judgment. God says, here we're going on, build a ark and go forward. You understand? And God gave him all the dimensions of this ark, of how to build it, and the size of the ark. And why Noah was building the ark, Noah was preaching. Noah didn't take nearly a hundred years to build this ark and preaching every day. And not one single man repented of the sins. And brethren, that reminds me of today, in the times we live in, some people go, so when you tell them, Jesus coming soon, they say, I hear him that sins are small. People was telling Noah the same thing. God judgment you talking about? You talking about rain? Rain never fell. What are you doing with, with, with this big boat? There's no ocean close by for this boat to sail on. And it's the same thing as we in our times. Men asking you to say, hey, so long I hear Jesus coming. Brother, whether you believe it or not, that doesn't change the fact that he's coming again. And Jesus told his disciples, he said, hey, the same thing will happen in the time before I come. And I submit to you today, even as in our time, as the Bible tells us that men is lovers of themselves more than lovers of God, the wicked, the evil, everything that represents hell coming out from me. I, I saw one person protesting at a time and have a placard and the placard says, go into hell and proud. Go into hell. That is what they say. I am going to hell and I'm proud. That is to tell you how evil men are today. He's proud that he's going to hell. But I tell you just as how Noah found grace in the sight of God and God prepared an ark for him. Brethren, those of us who find faith or find grace in the sight of God, God has provided an ark in the person of Jesus Christ for us today. There's safety in the ark of God. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we shouldn't perish, but that the world may have life through him. Brethren, Jesus is here. Jesus is our modern day ark. He's the one that we find safety in from the judgment and the wrath of God. Brethren, the judgment and the wrath of God is coming upon this world. It is coming just as how God was grieved in Noah's time because of the sin and the evil of men's heart. And brethren, somehow I feel it even worse in our time. God's heart is grieved today. God's heart is grieved today to see what is taking place upon the face of the earth. And brethren, the righteousness of God, because he is righteous, he must judge the calling for justice. You know things taking place in my nation, in this beautiful nation of Trinidad and Tobago, and people calling for justice, and they rightly deserve justice, but God also calling for justice, and he will render true justice upon this earth, brethren. And if you are not on the side of God, you will feel the wrath of the almighty God. But he provided a way out. Just as he provided a way out for Noah, he provided a way out for us today. And that ark in the person of Jesus Christ is our ark of safety today. One of my favorite scriptures is Romans chapter 8. The Bible said there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. The main thing is they, the, in, in, in that verse you have to be in Christ. Just like Noah had was to be in the ark to be saved. We had to be in Christ to be not condemned with the world. You have to be in Christ. You have to be in Christ. If you have to escape the judgment of God. And the judgment of God is coming, up, coming upon this world. It is coming, brethren. I don't know how else to say it, but just to say it. It is coming, Jesus said, I will return. He's coming back. And he was saying it to, to his disciples. And I want us to know today, regardless of who you are or where you are, you need to be in the safety of God's ark, which is Jesus Christ upon the earth today. You need to be in that place. You need to know what it is to be in Christ to escape 
the judgment of God. And the Bible even tells us when he returns, when Jesus returned for his church, when Jesus returned for his church, as we see in Thessalonians, let me find that scripture for you. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter four. And verse 16. Hear what it says here. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of an archangel, with a trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. I want us to understand that not just the dead will rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Those of us that are in Christ shall rise first. Those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior will rise first. So brethren, if you already die before Jesus return, you're going to be first. Hallelujah. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall ever be with the Lord. Brethren, the secret here is being in Christ. Just as how the secret in Noah's time was, was being in the ark. He and his family was in the ark. And when the rain started to fall and the floods came, they were safe. Brethren, once the trump of God is sung, once the trump of God is sung, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him. What is your position this morning? Where are you this morning? Where are you today on this day? Are you one of them who is coughing in the face of God and saying, hey, I don't want nothing to do with God? Are you one of them who walking about lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. What is your position today? Brethren, don't do like the people in Noah time and wait until God shut the door and the flood come in, then to run and say, oh God, it will be too late. Brethren, now is the time to get in the ark of God. Now is the time to get in the place of safety because no man know the hour when the Lord will descend with that shout. It will come sudden. It will come like a thief in the night. No man know it. No man, no man know it. Only God himself know when that hour will be. And I'm challenging you today. I'm challenging you today. Come out from the dark. Come out from the hole that you are in. Come out from that dark place that you are in and come into the ark. There is room in the ark today. There is room in God's ark today. There is room at the cross for you today. You don't have to go through what you are going through today. You don't have to suffer the things that you are suffering today. You don't have to be in that dark hole today. There is safety in the ark of God. God has provided a place of safety for you. And brethren, God is calling you today. God is calling you today. He's calling. He said, come out. He said, come. 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 Come unto me today. And I will give you rest. So come to the Lord today. Come to Jesus. God has provided this ark of safety for you. And there is no place like the ark of God. There's no place like the presence of God. And I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge each and every person listening to my voice today. Jesus said it to his disciple. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be 
just before I return. And if we survey our earth today, we will see the wickedness that takes it, taking place that is telling us that Jesus is coming soon. Jesus gave us a, gave us a hint, you know. Even though he said no man know the day or the hour, he said one of the things I will say to you, though, is that what was taking place in no time will take place just before my return. And it is taking place now. Evil in every corner of this earth. Evil every corner of the face of this earth. People taking advantage of people. Children disrespectful to their parents. Men killing men for no reason at all just because their heart is evil and desperately wicked. And God is going to judge. He's calling for justice. God is calling for justice. And I say to you today, if you don't know Jesus, if you are not in the ark, today is a good time, a good day to come into the ark. And if you say today, preacher, how do I get in to the ark? Jesus said, if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Christ, he's the Lord, and confess with your tongue that he is God, you shall be saved. And if you want this Jesus, if you want to enter this place of safety, if you want to enter this ark of safety, I can lead you in a prayer this morning that will take you into the presence of God, that will take you before the throne of God, and you will experience his grace and enter his ark of safety. So today, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I ask you to say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Wash me in your blood, Lord, and make me white as snow. Forgive me for everything that I do that was contrary to your word. I give my heart to you today. I ask you to come in and save me, Lord, from all my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Father, those people who, re who re repeat that prayer, oh God, Father, I pray today that you're going to seal them with the spirit of the living God. That, oh God, that you're going to strengthen them. And, oh God, that you're going to comfort them, oh God. And let them know that they are in a safe place as they come unto you. Oh God, that you will keep them safe, oh God, Father, for all eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And if this morning you repeated that prayer and you want to call or you want to talk to somebody, our phone number here is 72, in Trinidad, is 729-7917. 729-7917. And if you're calling outside of Trinidad and Tobago, you will dial 868-729-7917. 868-729-7917. And brethren, I want to say God bless you. God keep you. Today is a great day because you have stepped into the ark of safety. God bless you and have a wonderful week in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.